I think that the first major revolution must have been the creation of the earth, you know. Whether you look at it from the Big Bang Theory or you look at it from the point of creation, it, it was a revolutionary thing for it to happen. And subsequent uh, changes that have happened, whether you look at them from the point of creation, uh, there were quite fundamental changes because a revolution is about fundamental change. Whether you look at it from the point of somebody having ate an apple, that suddenly changed everything in terms of how they saw things. So when Europe had completed its, its, its national democratic revolution and was now going on the age of imperialism, that's where they start to conquer the world, you know. And, 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 and so the problem of, 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 of uh, uh, imperialism starts for us. And I think that uh, uh, later, uh, Jan van Riebeck lands in the Cape and uh, the wars of extinction of the Khoi starts, the wars of dispossession happened in, 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 in Africa. Those wars were themselves wars of liberation as we were resisting. You know, uh, uh, that, that uh, 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 kind of, 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 of settler influx with nefarious intentions to colonize. So that's how also capitalism gets transferred to Africa through colonization that happens there. And that necessitates the struggle for, for, for liberation. And that struggle for liberation is what we, we now call the National uh, Democratic uh, Revolution. All struggles, when you look at them, the, the essence of them is an attempt uh, to, to dehumanize and an attempt to humanize. And all the revolutions uh, seek to do that. Even the previous preceding revolutions of slave societies, the slaves were fighting for their humanity. They were fighting to be humanized, to say we want to be recognized as human beings. And, and that, that's the essence of the National Democratic Revolution also. But for, for that humanity to happen, there is certain things, of course, that are the grievances of, of history that needs to be addressed. Uh, the issue of, of land dispossession is, is fundamental to that. The issue of, of, of class exploitation is fundamental to that. Now, you have three fundamental contradictions as a result of how the world has evolved. We have gender uh, 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 patriarchy, which happens also to be amongst the oppressors, or not only amongst the, the oppressors, and then you have national oppression, that people are, are oppressed with us. The oppressor also happens to reside within the same political formation, the country in within which we reside. With the founding of, 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 of diamonds and gold, then the white settlers actually needed more labor. And that's where even when you can go back to history, you, you will see that the, the issues of, 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 of the dispossession of people now, of cattle, of, of, of even more in terms of, 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 of land and so on, intensified very much. And, and therefore, in, around the period of, 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 of 1910 and so on, following, the, 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 following the, 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 what was, used to be popular known as the anglo Boer War and following the, 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 what is now known as the South African War, you have some kind of, 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 of agreement or truce happening of how to share the spoils of, of colonization between uh, Africaners and the English. And the union was established. But in that union, the, 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 the English still had some political predominance because they had actually won the war. But they were able to reach a truce because they said there's so much to take from this land, excluding the original inhabitants of, 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 this, of, of the land. And when I speak of the inher original inhabitants of, 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 of the land, including all Africans. There is this question of the Africanness of the Khoi. We're all Africans. Uh, it, it's one of the debates that is uh, quite coming up in the current uh, conjuncture, yet it's not the subject of, 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 of my input now. But the Union of, 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 of South Africa gets established. And when you read around that time, that's when even moves begin for the formation of a national uh, uh, movement. 
to say that the settlers are even uniting in order to, to, to control us. We need also a unified response. But our response, when you look at it, it was even a more civilized response, even in terms of politically. Because we were saying that let's build a country that is able to include all of us. Every struggle has got three components to it. It is political, uh, it is com economic, and it is theoretical. Every struggle needs to have its own theory. That defines its, its, itself, that sets itself apart from what it seeks to address. After the formation of, 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 of the ANC, it's a history that is very clear, and it's not a history that I, I want to, to go into. It was not really a period of, 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 of mass struggles. It was an attempt to engage uh, with uh, uh, the settlers, assuming that they were civilized people, that if you send deputations to them and, and you talk to them in their own language, they would understand. The, 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 the 1928... Uh, Native Republic thesis, which is now commonly called the Black Republic thesis, uh, is, 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 came, comes into being, which says that communist parties in the third world, they must work closely together with national liberation movements because the democratic goals of the national liberation movement are central to, to what the communist parties need to be doing to alleviate the plight of the working class, but also to get entrenched amongst the working class in order for them to conscientize the working class about the class struggle. That's where essentially the class struggle in South Africa begins to match with the, with, 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 with the national question at a conceptual level, because the two are, are never separate essentially. But at a conceptual level, that's why I said that what is important in any revolution is the political aspect, the economic aspect, and the, and, 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 and the theoretical aspect of it must, must, must be united in how you look at them. When we speak of this question of class struggle and national question and the gender question, some refer to it as, as, as stages. I don't see that as stages. I see that as simultaneous uh, challenges facing society at a, at, at a given point that are addressed simultaneously, just the others are more pronounced than the other. When, when, when you address the national question, you do not put aside the class question. The class question is inherent in the national question. And the national question is inherent in the class question. But once a revolution happens, society changes fundamentally in terms of people's relations with the means of production. But importantly, what shape those transformations is the development of the productive forces. Now, what are the productive forces? The productive forces is, as the economy developed, technology developed, workers a part of, of, of the productive forces as they become skilled. Their consciousness is also shaped differently. And the, all of these things necessitate a different society within which to exist. And that's what brings about a revolution. The coming into being of, of, of the youth league around the 1940s also play a seminal role. You just have to go back and look at the role of the youth league in terms of the African claims document and the kind of demands that are already being made there. Actually, you compare the African claims document with the United Nations Declaration of Rights, which comes two years later. You realize that we were already thinking quite ahead in terms of what ought to be the rights of people, because the United Declaration of Rights comes two years after the, 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 the African claims document. So when we, we speak about uh, the National Democratic Revolution being about to create a democratic, uh, non-racial, prosperous, and democratic South Africa, that non-racialism essentially is also about the economic sphere 
that the economic sphere must be deracialized. And when you go to the strategy and tactics of the ANC of, of, of 1997, we do speak about deracialization. You know, otherwise, if you leave national liberation movements alone, and you have the class struggle uh, differently, you are compartmentalizing the struggle. That's actually what leads to the stages approach as opposed to have the kind of conceptualization that we now have of the national democratic uh, uh, revolution seamlessly advancing from addressing the national question to addressing the class questions and the, the questions of patriarchy that are inherent uh, in, in, in society. The growth of imperialism, the growth of, 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 of monopoly capital uh, and, uh, associated with the growth and consciousness of, 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 the, of, 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 the, uh, of the working class are quite relevant to the question of dispossession, which is what creates the national question. So the three cannot be separated from, 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 from one another, and that is how generally, as a, as, as a movement, uh, we have uh, 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 looked at, at, at this. Now, we have conceptualized the period of 1994 as a democratic breakthrough. We did not say it's a consolidation of democracy. We must conceptualize in our own thinking in the concept of the National Democratic Revolution. What does it mean to say that democracy is now consolidated, therefore the National Democratic Revolution is accomplished? Comrade Mko did his utmost best, really. He spoke very fast, and he tried to squeeze in a whole lot of information. And at some point he was going back and forth and remembering some points he took. And I think there's many new points personally that I've picked up. But I think this central emphasis has been the emphasis that the three contradictions in the NDR cannot be dealt with in isolation. They should be simultaneously dealt with. That is why it took us also to the question of stages. Uh, one debate we usually have to say this second phase uh, of democratic transition of today. I want to understand. Which of uh, politics can change the, our people, that can, that can be closer to our people? Which politics is that? That can be close to our people. That can say tomorrow uh, we are living a better South Africa, a better society. But the closest one, which one is it? Are we, are we, are we, are we protected? Those are the issues, comrades. Are we protected? You see that, those things. Now, those are the tasks of the, uh, uh, those are the tasks of the, of the uh, democratic uh, revolution. You see, our agricultural program, food security. You see that thing. The land pressure. Are we are taking it. Uh, are we redistributing well? What do we think about uh, uh, taking land without any compensation. You see, those are the issues of the, of the National Democratic Revolution. You see that thing? Yes. Now, those are current issues. Yes, uh, uh, every time we are, we are dealing with them, you see? But are we on track? Is the, is the National Democratic Revolution triumph? Yeah. The education we receive from the organization and the, the institutionalized education that we received is almost so different that, it's in, that it is in contradiction. Uh, but I will address it when I raise the issue within the struggle components. I would want us to also agree that, uh, I think we will agree that we are currently going through a negative moment as a country, which is when new antagonisms arise while we have not dealt with the old antagonisms that have already been previously existing. That is where we are right now as a country, and that is where you will find that currently we are characterized as a country as the most uh, unequal society in the world. Even after the democratic breakthrough in 1994, it is said that 
since 1996, in inequality within South Africa has actually risen. It has not gone down, which is uh, something we thought that uh, the democracy would bring down that number. We will, we will be almost more equal, and that is what uh, something that we have fought to achieve. And also, I would like to highlight the, that the social construction of race, class, and gender within the country has been something that has been constructed under apartheid. We did not change anything within the construction of those three. In race, class, gender, we have continued with it, but we are trying to, to change it, but we have not gone anywhere with that. I would just like to ask Comrade Mkoli Simlata, former Secretary General of SASCO, the following questions. First and foremost, you said that there are no stages of the National Democratic Revolution. And as we would know that there is no common, common conceptualization of the National Democratic Revolution within the mass democratic movement itself. For an example, the ANC would say that they would conceptualize the National Democratic Revolution as dealing with the, the national, the gender, and the class contradictions simultaneously, which means the one does not surpass the other. However, as SASCO, we recognize the class contradiction as the primary contradiction which reinforces the national and gender contradictions. Now, based on our analysis of the National Democratic Revolution, we came to the detection that national liberation was primary at a given stage. Hence, Joslovo would also say that Pure class struggle does not exist. There's nothing like that as pure class struggle. So in the context of South Africa, class struggle had a national content. So as you also said that we had a democratic breakthrough, we have not consolidated democracy yet, but do we agree that we have achieved political freedom? And by virtue of that political freedom, is that not national liberation and the resolution of the national contradiction, which ushers in now the second more radical phase of the national democratic revolution, which is economic freedom, thus making the class contradiction, the primary contradiction in this conjuncture. So, do we really say that the Freedom Charter in this juncture remains central to advance the National Democratic Revolution? Or is the Communist Manifesto better placed to advance the National Democratic Revolution to achieve a socialist society or at best socialist democracy? The, 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 the elimination of, of, of private property is not necessarily in itself a revolutionary act. You know, because you, 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 we have had instances of state capitalism, and, and that's what Stalinism was, you know, where the state owns the property, not the people. And as a result, you have those who are in the state behaving like their bourgeoisie, without necessarily being the owners of means of production, but be the controllers of the means of production. So that, 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 that's, that, that's very important. And, and I think that one key aspect of, 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 of the Marxist struggle, which I don't want to go into, is, 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 is not necessarily to, 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 to eliminate uh, 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 
capital. You know, every society emerges from the womb of the previous society. But it's, it's about, obviously, the patterns of ownership. There's issues like social ownership and, 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 and so on. But those are not necessarily uh, uh, tasks that are in contradiction to the national democratic revolution, your socialist struggle if you want to get there. Your national democratic revolution actually takes you much closer than anything else to, 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 to a socialist society, if you, if you are socialist. But the national democratic revolution is the only deepest going democratic transformation as, o, o, as opposed to your, 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 your formal democracy, your liberal democracy, where you just get the right to vote and, and you are happy. That's why in South Africa today, in the context of the National Democratic Revolution, we're speaking of the redistribution of, of, of land. You know, you can't stand and declare yourself a vanguard. You end that role, even by virtue of being a communist party, doesn't make you a vanguard party. You end that role in society. Society must say you are a vanguard party. So, 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 so. The party's got the right to contest for ideas in 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 public space, to contest for political power in, in public space, and prove itself there that it is a vanguard party. <laughs> You know, you don't declare in your constitution, in your document, that we are a vanguard party. People walking there must say that is the vanguard party. So I, I think that that, 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 that that is important. I think that the, 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 the comment on, 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 on the, uh, the, the, the motive forces is, 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 uh, is, is quite uh, correct, you know. But because the National Democratic Revolution does not necessarily intend to, 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 to eliminate classes. That's why some people think already ahead of how we're going to manage classes in the next context, and they are speaking of social compacting and so on. So, so, so class struggle, you uh, uh, class struggle and the national struggle, you, you can't separate them. You know, I spoke about the political struggle, I spoke about the economic struggle, and I spoke about the theoretical question which seeks to conceptualize and brings these two to, together. You know, the, 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 the economic demands that we have uh, uh, currently are indicative of an incomplete political struggle. You don't look at a state say we've completed the political struggle. It's because we've got political demands. Those economic demands are political demands. You, you take them from our political documents, our political perspectives. So you don't separate the two. So it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a fallacy to say that we've achieved our political demands. We've, uh, that's why we have a challenge of the nature of democracy that we're still in the process of building, was that nature of democracy is aligned to these economic demands that must be met, the land question the equitable redistribution of the means of production. Within a capitalist formation that we live in, you must then define what would be equitable. Was it that it will not necessarily eliminate class contradiction, but you will have issues like a living wage to say that at least if some, everyone earns 10,000, then it's enough to give you a good life. It's equitable in the context of the society that we live in, as an example. Free education, it creates equitable opportunity. So those are economic demands, but they can happen within democracy. You look at your, your, your Scandinavian countries, those things are happening. I mean, uh, there are countries where uh, the, 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 the kind of social security net that people have, you have referred to SAS, is so advanced, far than where you are. When people in the continent look at us, they say we are in heaven. Because we are the only country that's paying grants that I know on the African continent, that's paying pensions to old people on the African continent. But we haven't reached yet where we are supposed to go, because those do not necessarily give you a living. You speak of a living wage, you must still speak of a living grant. That gives you an amount with which you can live in a way that says you have been humanized, because democracy is about humanizing society. 